Well, Don, recently we've seen a rash of people getting caught doing a little uh, little modifications, a little cheating with their race cars. Um, how do you kind of feel about um, the whole aspect of the cheating and all that stuff? Well, cheating, in my book, is like A.J. Foyt once told me. He said, there is no such thing as cheating unless you get caught. <laughs> That otherwise it's just a modification of the rules. And then, you know, Junior Johnson was along the same kind of, uh, uh, or same line of thinking. In fact, all of us were back in, the, back in the day. I can remember back in the 70s when, uh, you know, when things were a lot looser, I'll, I'll put it that way, a lot of free thinking going on. And, um, you know, at, at uh, Daytona, there was, a, there was a big hullabaloo about the guys that were on the front row at the, for the Daytona 500 and why they, why are they not being yanked off because they were caught cheating and everything was semi-covered up back then, but, but the press was, you know, dragging it out so people understood that that it was going on. And I know for a fact it was going on because I remember what they did. I will not use the man's name, but I will tell you this. On the dashboard of the cars back then, we used to have, you know, like Stuart Werner gauges. And the gauges were actually, you, could, you know, back in the day, you could take the gauges apart and fix them and repair them, etc., And, you know, replace the lenses if you wanted to. Well, one of the more ingenious uh, uh, crew chiefs decided that since these thing, these engines always ran better with nitrous oxide, that there should be a way to put some nitrous into the engine compartment. And what he devised was a little tube of nitrous that went up the driver's sleeve on his, on his uniform and a little hose that he could pull down, and that hose could be hooked up to a, a uh, um, fitting that was behind the lens of one of the gauges on the dashboard. So when he got in the car, he could just pop the lens off, the, off that gauge and put it on the seat under his butt, and then quick turn two or three turns on that on that fitting, and when they went out to qualify, he just hammer down, you know, and he get out there, and then he turn the switch on inside his his sleeve, and the nitrous oxide would flow freely through that tube and into a nozzle that was in the in the back of a pop rivet fitting that was drilled out so that the gases could go into the into the uh, into the engine compartment, and the engine can pick up the nitrous, and of course you picked up, you know, 40 horsepower. <laughs> so it was, it was really, really ingenious. I don't know how the hell he got caught, but he got caught. And it was probably somebody else ratted him out, you know, that's how it usually happened. And of course, you know, then there were, then, then there was the big scandals about guys wanting to make their cars lighter, especially at certain racetracks, so what they would do, and I've seen this done, I was never involved, of course. <laughs> but anyway, I gotta tell you this. Um, they drill out, drill a hole in the, in the chassis, and the chassis was, you know, rectangular tubing, and they'd fill that hole up in the, and into a block in the chassis that was, into a portion of the chassis that was, that was, um, that was uh, hollowed out and blocked off, and they fill it up with BBs, you know, from the, from like shotgun shells. They fill that thing up, and the, the weight would be there, right? And then they get out on the racetrack and on, on uh, a caution flag, or, you know, even one time, one of the guys got caught when he did it, <laughs> when he dumped it on a pace lap and somebody saw him do it. <laughs> so, so then they would 
either have a little pull wire or an electric switch or something just to pop the thing open. They get a hole in the bottom of that chassis, just spill out the BBs onto the, onto the ground and away you go. 100 pounds lighter or 50 pounds or 60 pounds. Hell, you'd, you'd kill for 25 pounds on some racetracks. So, um, you know, <laughs> those were, were some of the things that were done. And of course, I think one of the more ingenious things that was done, it was a friend of mine that did it, so I know it's true. Uh, uh, for qualifying, they would actually dump a bunch, not a bunch, but maybe a half quart of of, um, of fluid out of the transmission for qualifying, and then there was a vent on the top of the of the uh, of the transmission case, and they'd fill that thing up with liquid nitrous oxide, and so it would mix with the oil, and then when you get out on the racetrack, the oil would start to heat up, and that would cause it to atomize, and it would go up this little vent tube into the into the uh, engine compartment of the, on the race car and the, and the uh, air cleaner would suck up the nitrous and away you go. It was, it was very clever. And he didn't get caught, but he should have. It was so, it was so simple, it was stupid. But, <laughs> but um, those are just some of the things that went on. And of course they were, you know, they were, they were uh, more, uh, ingenious than, you know, than uh, anything else. You know, everybody looks at, at a, di a different way. What is the rule book there for? Well, it's to guide you, you know. And in those words, it's a guide. You know, it's not necessarily a stamped thing. You know, there's a lot of gray areas around that guide, and the guys that are smart enough will take advantage of those gray areas, they're not exactly illegal, but then again, they're not exactly legal either. So, um, has it, is it something new? Absolutely not. And is it going to go on? And I guess it goes on every day. We don't know about it, you know what I mean? The, the big thing now is to get any kind of an edge, legal or otherwise, with these cars that are all the same, and that's the key to it. All the cars come from NASCAR, and they're all, you know, they're all digitized, and they know every inch of them. And to get an edge now costs you probably a hundred times more than it would cost you when the when the rules were a little bit looser, you know. So there's not as much free thinking, and maybe there's a certain amount of people in our sport who discourage free thinking. They don't want you to be a thinker. You know, they want the, the teams to get a car from one, one location, and that is all specified, and then get an engine from a location that's specified and certified, and get a transmission or transaxle or whatever it may be from a location that's spot of, and then just assemble it. They don't build the cars anymore you know, like we used to. And I think that's, uh, I, I know it's a savings for the car owners, but is it really something that, uh, that stimulates uh, thinking in the sport? I don't think so. And the other thing is, what happens then? Is everything yeah, the only thing is, the only difference supposedly is the driver, and maybe that's what, what they want. But, you know, I can't, I can't feel that. I, I just don't see that. The, the, the end result, though, has been very good for NASCAR because they've got 15 or 16 different winners, and, then, and that, that's something that the people in the grandstands like, you know? But, and maybe that's what we should look at. You know, Bill France once told me, he said, you know, this is not an exercise in engineering. We are in the entertainment sport. We are, in, we are an entertainment sport and we're here to entertain, entertain the people in the grandstand. And he said, so don't tell me about how long your 
Declan is, or how high your spoiler is. I don't want to hear it. He said, I want to know how many people are, butts are in the, in the grandstand, you know. So there's 10 different ways to look at it, I guess, but um, that's what makes life worth living. You know, if you got an opinion and I got an opinion and, and she's got an opinion and he's got an opinion and we put them all together, then we can all have an argument. <laughs> or, you know, a discussion, you know what I mean.